Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. Well, I've taken a few days and completely cleaned my workshop. I cleared off all of the work surfaces and put down a semi-gloss white on all of the surfaces. Then put everything back and reorganized everything and put it in its place. So I'm super excited. Um, it's so great having a clean shop. It really motivates me, uh, makes me want to be even more creative. All right, well, in today's episode, we are back working on the new section of the layout, the uh, big waterfront scene. Okay, so this is the area that we're going to be working in. And today we're going to be working on structures that fit into this area. Uh, we're going to be working on this one here, which is from Carolina Craftsman Gits. Then we have two little structures that fit right here side by side, and they are from Foscale Models. Okay, so the first kit is this one right here, and it is from Carolina Craftsman Kits. So I braced all of my walls first and then um, before I put this together I put a gray primer on the outside and a brown spray paint on the inside. Then I glued the four walls together. Now of course I, uh, I read the instructions two maybe three times just to really get familiar with the kit. And here are all the parts and the signs. Okay, now the kit from Foscale. L. Baker Produce Supplies. And so you can see it's two structures. So the first one here is right there. And then the second one is right there. So I've braced all the walls. I've uh, lifted some of the clapboard. Now we'll go ahead and stain all these pieces. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is lay down some paper. I am trying to work uh, a little cleaner. <laughs> so what I've done is I've got this whole roll of paper, which I believe I got at Office Depot. So, just because we're gonna be doing some painting and it could get messy. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is stain these walls. Okay, so I've got a little bit of water And we're gonna take bittersweet chocolate. We're gonna take gunmetal gray, it's a metallic. Mm, I think it's about equal amount. Then we're gonna take black. Uh, my black might be getting old. <laughs> okay. okay. And you can see I just dipped my brush in it. And that was it. Now we're just going to stir that up good. And let's find the back, the back wall. Okay, I think this is the back wall. <laughs> Actually, we'll try it on the back first. dry it quick. I'm not sure what it needs more of. Do a little more brown. We won't add any more of the metallic. I think we're good on that. I like my stain to be kind of dark because we're going to do um, a chipped paint effect 
over it. So I want there to be a good contrast. Okay, hopefully you can see the difference. So we're going to go with the darker one. And you, as you can see, it has a little bit more brown in it. And it's just darker. Okay, we'll switch to a bigger brush. So a couple of them are slightly curling. So we're just going to stain the back of it quick. Okay, while we're waiting for our walls to dry, um, let's start rusting all of the panels. So though the kit comes with cardstock, and you get three pieces. Now what I did was I put a gray primer on them, and then misted a dark brown over them. And it's a little spotty, but don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna cover that. Okay, so I've cut these into strips of one and an eighth. And now I'm just cutting random sizes. Okay, so I've put down some tape upside down so it's sticky side up. Okay, now we'll just start to put all of our panels on here. Okay, they're all taped down. Um, now I'm going to use bittersweet chocolate, burnt sienna, raw sienna, and antique gold. And I'm going to take a sponge and I'm going to sponge on all those colors to make these all look like rusted panels. Okay, the paint's all done. As you can see, um, I used four different sponges. And now we're going to use some pigments from Ammo. Light Rust. And a little goes a long way, so you want to be very careful with it. And as you can see, I'm just going along the bottom. Okay, I've done these over here. These are all done, and the top row is pretty much done. Okay, I'll go ahead and finish the rest, and then... I'm not sure we may put a little sponge a little bit of silver onto them. Okay, so now I'm taking some silver and very lightly dabbing some on. Okay, our panels are all done. Now we can move this and get back to our walls. Okay, we're back working on our walls. They're all dry, and what I'm going to use next is a product from Ammo, and it's called a shader, and we're using the color Dirt. Now this is, uh, it's translucent. It's acrylic, so it's water-based, but you're not covering up um, you're not covering up the work that's already done. And a little goes a long way. So towards the bottom, I'm just going to dirty, uh, dirty up some of the boards. Okay, I wanted to show you these quick because I also used one of the shaders called Ash Black. And... It is just amazing how it weathers the wood. I love the effect that it has on the wood. Really, really makes it look old and weathered.
Okay, so I mixed a yellow and I used antique gold, um, yellow ochre would work, and then I used sunflower. Uh, I then put a drop of uh, just regular yellow. So it's just kind of a custom color. Um, what I did was I started towards the bottom and did some light sponging. Then I went heavier towards the top. I then took a, uh, a brush, did some individual boards. And some I did heavy, some I did some dry brushing. And uh, I'll show you. So I just put a coat of raw umber on the trim and the doors and windows. Now I'm going to sponge on burnt sienna. I think that'll be a nice contrast to do all the trim um, this color. Uh, but again, I'm applying it with a sponge because I want it to look very chipped and very worn. Our windows are all painted and weathered. Now I'm making shutters for both sides of uh, all the windows. Let me show you. I then took a sharp number two pencil and put nail holes. Okay, just finished staining them. Um, now I'll sponge on our burnt sienna. Okay, this is where we're at so far. But I'm gonna set this to the side for now and get back to work on our other structure. Okay, well, let's start gluing our panels on. We'll start with the bottom row. Want to make sure that they all are level at the bottom. Okay, now we'll start the next row. Okay, well, I've got two rows finished. Now I'll just keep going. Okay, I wanted to show you quick how I handle uh, the windows. So I just picked a piece and put it there. See, it's level with the. Uh, the door opening but you can see it it sticks up into the windows so you just simply take your knife now we'll just put some glue on the back of this and there it is okay it is completely finished and I used almost all of the uh, paper that was provided in the kit. Uh, these will make nice um, patches, maybe rough patches, and I can cut them even into smaller squares, and I can definitely use these. Uh, but here it is. Now I just have to put in all of the uh, windows and doors. Okay, so I know that a lot is done now, and I want to apologize because I had some technical difficulties. Uh, you may have noticed the sound quality up to this point was a bit staticky, and there was an annoying uh, sound that was a repeat sound on the video. Um, everything has been fixed. But unfortunately, there's some video showing me get, getting to this point that uh, was not usable. But don't worry, I will um, go over each piece here and show you and talk about how I got to this point. Okay, let's quick talk about the uh, pier 
that's under these two structures. Now for HO scale, I never go any further than an inch and a half when I'm spacing my pilings. So from the center of this piling to the center of this piling, um, don't go any further than an inch and a half. You can put them closer, just don't go any further. And then with the height, so from the deck here to the bottom of the piling, that's also an inch and a half. Now you can see here I went lower with this one and then just built a set of stairs. Uh, but I wouldn't go any taller than an inch and a half. And then, like I'd said, with the uh, spacing of the pilings, I wouldn't go any further than an inch and a half. Uh, it just looks out of scale, in my opinion. Then I put paper shingles on this and then painted and weathered them. Now, these are paper shingles, and you can get those from... CarolinaCraftsmanKits.com. You can get them from Casey'sWorkshop.com. Uh, and I just used acrylic paint and dry brushed them. And then for the uh, the dirt, I used um, pigments. And this is Russian Earth. And I'll show you quick. It's a very fine powder. Hopefully you can see inside there. Just take a brush, dip the very end of the brush in it. Not the whole thing, just the very end. Then tap it on the inside of the container. And brush it on. It doesn't take much at all. There's hardly any on my brush. And it's that easy and they stick uh, very well. I mean, you're not able to wipe them off. So you don't need to put a, a sealer over it. I never spray a sealer over um, any of my weathering. Now you can use this anywhere on the model just to add dirt, shadows. Um, I have one that's a little darker, um, Farm Dark Earth. Again, just dip your brush Tap it off. Very easy. And like I said, these, uh, will last you a very long time. A little goes a long way. Okay, on this one, I first drew the deck on a piece of paper, the size that I wanted the deck. And I'll show you underneath what it looks like. So you can see there's a section cut out where the boats would go in and get worked on. But then there's a part of the decking over on this side. A lot of it gets covered up by the stone wall. But you can see the deck goes all the way over. So after I drew the pattern, I traced it onto a piece of the wood decking that I get from Northeastern Scale Lumber. Now the planks are an eighth of an inch wide. A lot of people ask me how wide the individual boards are. And each board measures an eighth because I believe they make some that are 
smaller, maybe a sixteenth. And then I'm sure they even go bigger. So um, the boards are one eighth of an inch wide. Then I made my pilings an inch and a half tall and figured out where I wanted them. Then glued my boards on there and then glued the pile the pilings um, in between the boards then I made the stone wall uh, I just poured plaster um, because I made a mold of these um, and then had to cut it down to the correct height which again is an inch and a half painted them a dark gray then did dry brushing of probably three different shades of gray. Uh, one was kind of a brownish gray, then a medium gray, then a really light gray just for the highlights. Then after that was done, I used a uh, slimy grime. The uh, <laughs> name is wearing off from thinner but it's called slimy grime. I brushed that on and then while it was wet, I sprinkled on fine turf and then glued that on using liquid nails. Now this sits into a hillside. So you'll see the back of it is just the uh, plaster. Uh, I wanted to point out too with this kit this wall I put that wall on upside down because I wanted to have a deck um, up here I thought it would make it look a little bit more interesting let me grab the picture from the box so here you can see on the side that that big door is level with the door over here in the front. So I took that wall and turned it upside down. So then using the same material of decking, I made a little deck up here. Then just from using strip wood from Northeastern Scale Lumber, I just scratch built all of this. The no wake is from a Foss Scale model kit. And I just love this stencil. I've used it a, a few times. So all I did was placed it on there and I taped both ends with some non-stick uh, painter's tape. Then with a sponge, I used desert sand. And it's a kind of a tan cream color. I went over the whole thing with this. Um, heavier towards the top, less at the bottom. Then across the whole top, maybe the top half, I used an off-white. This just happens to be light buttermilk, but any off-white will work. Okay, then I took it off. Then I used my pigments. I used medium rust. and Russian earth. And I just brushed those right over the paint. It was all completely dry. And I just took my brush and dipped it in and brushed it right over the letters. This made it look like the paint is wearing off and the rust is coming through. Um, the oysters sign 
was meant to go on the roof and you actually get two different signs in the kit um, I went with the larger sign but they make one that's a little bit smaller and you can see mine is raised off the front of the building so I just painted that white then with a sponge I uh, sponged on some raw umber sponged on the raw umber then again went in with some pigments towards the bottom and that gave me the rusted sign uh, it comes with this big sign in the kit and let me grab you actually get three so they just have different font styles now I cut mine to match the uh, metal panels and then just glued it just put white Elmer's glue on the back using a paintbrush brushed it on thin and stuck it on there then after it's dry I just went in with my pigments and brushed over it and then with the raw umber I sponged some raw umber over it so that gave us a uh, old looking sign the uh, crane is provided in the kit for the rope I use uh, this thread and I'm not sure exactly what it is it may be a thicker thread that's used for sewing denim uh, I would definitely check at a fabric store hopefully you're able to see it's got a great texture it actually looks like rope so after I get it in place uh, first to keep it in place I'll use a small dot of super glue to hold it then after I get it all exactly the way I want it I brush over it with half water half glue just brush it over it and let it dry and you'll see it's stiff it's not going to move well i got my doors glued in place um, i added some rope I uh, decided to put tar paper on this roof. Um, I was going to put corrugated uh, metal on there and I just got lazy and just <laughs> decided to quick put some tar paper on there because I had some uh, handy. And uh, I added the uh, two smokestacks that come with the kit. I also added some stains to the deck. I don't know if you'll be able to see that good. What I used was a wash. It's called track wash. They make other washes. Um, I just so happened to use this one and I thinned it. I used probably 60% thinner with it. And then just brush it on and it soaks into the wood and really gives it a nice stained look and i really hope that you can see the stains on there okay for my last detail on this i used this uh acrylic color called rust track and put some streaks going down from the windows 
Okay, well, here's what they look like on the new section of the layout. I'll give you a little closer look. I just set some boats on there to uh, kind of see what it's going to look like. Okay, well, as you can see, we still have a lot more work to do. All right, well, thanks for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. So until next time, stay motivated, and happy modeling, everyone.